What is up everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Talking the Point, a conversational Overwatch series where today we're excited to be joined by one of Dallas Fuel's assistant coaches, Emmanuel Zoni. How are you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. Um, a bit, a bit uh, hectic, like with the schedule, you know, getting things working, but uh, good. Well, right off the bat, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. Obviously, Stage 4 just started up, but... To kind of jump right into things, I would be remiss to get you on here and not start out the discussion by talking about the last, how the last couple of weeks have been for you, because obviously it has been an incredibly hectic period. So obviously we saw the departure of former head coach Kai Kai, as he now moves on to work with fellow Texan rivals, the Houston Outlaws. In his absence, you were required to step up as interim head coach. So first of all, I guess to start out the discussion, how prepared were you for that experience? Did you kind of sense an inkling that that was a possible that was a possibility or did that did his departure come as a shock to you and the team um so when when it right happened it it was like a shock uh because i yeah we we didn't know you know like a week or two weeks ahead or something it was very fast and it was the first two or three days that were extra like stressful for me because I knew the amount of work that I had to do, and also how much you know fans uh, you know expect of me, how what the team expects from me, what the organization, and all that. And then it's sort of like trying to run a quick race and uh, not stumble on your own feet. Right. So stepping into that role of head coach on short notice, like. I guess, how did you approach that transition? Because as you say, it's not like in other sports, perhaps, where there is a time where you can slow down and take things in. You kind of had to adapt on the fly and figure things out. So how was it settling into that role? Um, so so basically, we it was me and Volgin that uh, were the remaining coaches in the team. And at that point, we, uh, we had a talk um, just the first day and sort of felt it out how the team was feeling, you know, the atmosphere in the practice room, all that. And after the first day, uh, second and third day, I spoke with Volgin and uh, just said, we, we will need some, some basic uh, foundation for splitting our work, keeping things streamlined as possible, and just set up like two different uh, roles for us. And, you know, so we split the work, for example, I did more team-oriented stuff because uh, I had the responsibility of the environment and also the team mood. And while at it, I can also do team strats and more macro so that Volgin, he can like specialize in micro stuff and do individual analysis or prepare you know, strategies and then I implement them. Right. So that, that's how we basically started it out. And right when I did that, it, it came naturally. It wasn't any difficult to do that. Sure. So throughout that period of time, on top of those responsibilities, was there, did the responsibility kind of fall on your shoulders to find and scout another head coach in that process? Or was that someone else's role during that time? I was uh, asked if I had any recommendations. And at the time, I didn't know who was available or who was uh, recommended already and it was mostly the organization doing the hiring and you know they had open uh, applications basically you know taking recommendations interviews with uh, several people and so on and in the end it was uh, yeah the upper management doing it right so did you have a say in the matter or did it kind of just fall down to other people on the team finalizing that deal oh no we had a say we had a say okay. and uh, you know, we, we talked with uh, Arrow, everyone, before we, you know, went further and uh, everyone, you know, could ask their own questions or um, comments or, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah. We How had... far in advance did you, did the team settle on Arrow as the head coach? Because obviously we found out just a few days prior to stage four commencing. Obviously there wasn't much time to work with, but did you guys figure out a little bit before that who would be the head coach moving forward? I think we knew about a week ahead in time i'm unsure uh because it, it wasn't uh, how do you say the announcement and so on came 
after he uh, did mm-hmm. his first day. And uh, I think it mostly like depended on contracts and all that stuff. Sure. So speaking of error jumping on board then, he stated in an interview recently, I think to quote him, I think he said that he was the team is actively committed to writing a new chapter now. Has it been, since he came on board, has it been, like, has his process been more to refine what's already there, or has he kind of come in and decided to sort of hard reset, sort of, like, refresh everything? How has it been since he's joined the team, essentially? Uh, there's definitely been a change from how it was uh, ran in stage one to um, half of uh, stage three. And the change is basically that we try to establish, like, a winning mentality in the the team. and making sure that we stop the egos, you know, where they have to stop and making sure that we all are open to learn and just trying our best and trying together. And before that, it was a bit more individualism and kind of butting our heads against each other and so on. Sure. So to kind of build on that then, given that the team unfortunately can't qualify for the end of season playoffs, what would you say has kind of been... The primary goal for this stage specifically is it kind of just to establish that like a sense of stability within the team has that been the primary focus uh, for sure for sure stability in the team and also players that you know wanting to show that they can do better and we believe uh, that every player can become way better than they have been at their peaks and especially the team as a whole can do much better and there's been many matches where we've lost because of our own individual mistakes and this stage is yeah is for a bit long process but also short process you know ironing out uh, our own mistakes and so on right so is the kind of is the approach more so to focus on the very immediate future have you guys sort of been planning ahead looking even further as the state season two and approaching the mindset for that uh I don't know for season two, but for we look forward to you know stage three, uh, no week three, week four, and so on, uh, to be stable throughout the weeks and consistently get better, like in steps. And if we have to start small in the beginning, then we start small, but we ramp it up right now. Sure. So to kind of get your take on a sort of controversial talking point in the community lately, as someone who has a unique perspective on the matter. What is your what are your thoughts on the idea of burnout in the league, and what would you do to kind of improve the format of the, or the structure of the league moving into season two and beyond? So the burnout reminds me a lot of how it is to go from studying in high school or you know upper secondary school and then go immediately to university or college, and even the students that can have straight A's get burned out within two months or three months because they go all in and do their best and then they don't know how to pace themselves and the same goes for the teams and staff here and i think the extra you know two you know the two matches per week that plays a big role in in the burnout because every team wants to do their best every staff wants to learn more you know get better and i know especially for me and uh, when cal was working and uh, all the players and so on we had a big amount of crunch hours and uh, crunch hours is not that healthy for people and burned out people, they don't become motivated or creative or anything. And that's why we then got into the bad uh, spiral or, you know, bad loop. And I think that maybe longer breaks uh, could help uh, possibly do more days like in between matches or uh, one week one match and then a rest week or something and then i don't know for for me it's as long as it's a bit less pace uh, higher pace than it is right now it's only better sure. uh, i don't i don't have any specific solution though so in regards to speaking about the future of season two and beyond obviously the idea is we'll be seeing inevitably expansion more teams added to the league and the idea is to have home and away games. How do you think that will affect the Dallas Fuel specifically? Do you feel as though, because right now, if you kind of look at it, the teams competing, like everyone's competing at the Blizzard Arena in LA, there's only really a select handful of teams that actually get 
the major applause when they're competing. It's like the LA team, obviously, because they're from, they have that home crowd. It's like Shanghai Dragons are getting applauded and then maybe like Houston and a couple of other teams here and there. Do you think that it would actually be a big factor if the Dallas Fuel team was competing in their hometown in front of a hometown crowd? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the Dallas fans are crazy. Like they're (laughs) crazy good and everyone is extremely supportive to us. Uh, of uh, and I don't know what to say. Like uh, it, it blew my mind when we went there, and every play was instantly filled with um, just heartwarming energy from from the people there. You you could see people that they had the look that they have been waiting years to meet Mickey or Coco or Seagull or Uncle or you know, and then they finally get to meet them and. It's like a burst of happiness, and that type of energy in a stage will outmatch, you know, any small section of uh, an away uh, cheering fan. Yeah. Sure. When you guys were on that trip in Dallas recently, if I'm not mistaken, you actually met with I think it's is it Don Kalkstein of the Dallas Mavericks. What was that experience like, actually meeting him in person? Because I think he's worked with the team remotely for a time, right? How was it actually meeting in person for the first time? Uh, we didn't meet him in Dallas, but he was uh, here in LA with us. And All right. I I don't know. I I can't express it because it's uh, it was so good, like, and so enlightening that it's still you know some some of the words he and phrases he said were are still um, something I, that I can take uh, lessons from, and just the behavior with players and how to speak with staff. Uh, it, it was very pleasant to work with him and very easy and very good. It was like snapping fingers that <laughs> easy for him to, to make players motivated and even, you know, staff motivated to work harder and, and better and more efficiently. Right. So will that relationship be continued in the future? Do you think you'll still you'll have meetings with him here and there to help out the team moving forward? Uh, I have no information on it, so I, I don't know. Uh, most likely, yes. Cool. Well, speaking of one player in particular, where there's been a lot of discussion around recently, obviously Effect took some time off recently to travel back to Korea to kind of de-stress and kind of just get away from the league as a whole lately. There's been, I mean, I don't think I'd be wrong to speak on behalf of the community and say that like, the vast majority of people in the Overwatch community kind of assumed that maybe he wouldn't be back for Stage 4. But yeah, just a few days ago, he tweeted out saying that he's feeling a lot better and he's kind of ready to come back and compete. Have you, has there been a constant line of communication between you and Effect? Do you think that he, he'll be back for Stage 4? Um, it's still to be determined. And uh, how do you say it? I've, I've been in a similar situation myself when, when I used to study. Obviously not to the same extent, but... Um, I was extremely burned out as well, and there, there's like small time, time windows where you feel like you have like gathered up energy and you feel good again. And it's important that it's not so small that you, you know, deplete it instantly. And I think it's good to to make sure that he is fully ready, you know, and energized and rested up and so on. And and all that before he comes back and you start practicing practicing hard and all that again and i can't give an answer to it uh, because it might change week to week but uh, for the moment he isn't uh, coming back for stage four Uh, that that i know of has there been so since his departure or since he's gone back to Korea? Has there been like a constant line of communication with you guys, or has there sort of just been a moment where you've let him breathe, you've let him have his time? Uh, I personally have let him breathe. Um, I know that some stuff is sensitive, you know, especially with the team and the team struggling and so on. But I've always tried to support him, especially before he went. Um, I tried to help him find some, you know calmness and and you know remove stress and give methods to almost meditate but uh, it's like mindfulness i I tried to help with that and uh, just helping the ways i I could and i didn't understand how how the situation was at the at the time as well so 
I think I could have done things better as well. But um, uh, during uh, the last uh, week or two, um, not that much communication with me. But he has spoken with Hastro a lot. He has spoken with the management and so on. Was there, before he left, was there like, do you notice other players on the team kind of trying to assist where, where they can? If another player is down, do you notice others trying to lift him up? Is that sort of like the mentality of the team? Everyone tries to help themselves, uh, you know, to help each other, I mean. And we've had times where we had had, we've had talks with each other. So we, it, it can be like a group talk. It can be one-on-one. -on -one, doesn't matter, you know, outside of the practice room. And we just talk about uh, the hardships, you know, with uh, going home after several losses or uh, coming back to the practice room, practice, the practice didn't go well, and then go home and uh, you feel like uh, you regressed and then come back again. Like those kind of feelings, we talk it through, players talk with each other, and uh, when they play in game, they try to boost each other as well, and we try to make the culture that we do empower each other and boost each other. So just in the first week of Stage 4 alone, have you sensed, since Aero has come on board, have you sensed kind of a relative improvement in the team and in terms of morale and in terms of performance? Because, I mean, you got the win over Shanghai and you dropped the series to Gladiators, but it was a close series and almost every player took to Twitter after the game and said immediately just how much they felt that they've improved on an individual level and as a unit. Have you noticed that sense of improvement in terms of the team already? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I don't know what more to say. We, <laughs> everyone is more happy than before. So yeah. Sure. And you think that will continue to be a trend moving forward in stage four? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like any relationship. We, we have to nurture it and make sure that it grows. And uh, we can't really let it go on its own because then it might take you know, wild swings and so on. But I, I think I think we'll uh, be even better. Yeah. Cool. Was, um, I don't know if you remember on um, Watchpoint a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a Monty quote at the end of it where he said something along the lines of players just need to suck it up because it's only going to get worse. Do you have any thoughts on that specifically? Does that kind of bother you when you see that and like having put in all the hard work and determination and seeing how much of a detrimental factor like player fatigue can be? Does that bother you or do you just let it pass by the wayside? Um, neither of those actually. It, it's not that it doesn't bother me or bother me. Uh, I understand what he means and um, I think too many people look at the negative uh, harsh or like the color in it hmm. instead of the actual message in it. And from how I see it, it's um, like when, when the first trial of fire happens, you know, in any, in any career where maybe you have to be, um, maybe if you're like a StarCraft uh, Brood War Pro in the old days and you're with your teammates and you share in a one room apartment, you sleep on mattresses and you eat like noodles every day and you try to make it like, then there's uh, people in you know construction uh, areas or whatever like any any type of work that just grinds it out and i think what he meant is that it's normal like that it this happens and that it's a part of life and less i don't think he meant that anyone is weak or anything if it's more that um, you have to learn, you know, how to deal with it, and you have to learn methods or techniques, and and accept that some that there's always going to be periods where you feel like you're doing terrible, or you feel everything else in life is going bad, and it's natural, and that's how I look at it as well. Right. Well, from your perspective, then it's kind of like someone overseeing the team. Had you noticed from the jump? that I guess the, the mindset of a player had to kind of shift a lot, right? Because they were used to competing once every couple of months for a weekend long event, something like that, or once every week in like the online weekly melee kind of things. Did you notice that a lot of players found it really hard to adapt in those first few weeks of the league when it was just relentless? Definitely. I think it, it went uh, from players to staff to even some, some like whole teams that uh, had a shock basically in in terms of preparation practice and 
the routines. Some players in our team, other teams, etc., didn't have the t- uh, routines they have right now. You were they need to be sleeping at a certain time, you know, to make sure that they feel rested. Uh, or they, for example, staff like me, I would uh, stay up long nights in, in stage one and two. And I did that because uh, obviously I worked remotely as well. So I had to stay up. But then I started uh, sleeping from 10 a.m. to maybe 5 p.m. And long term, that takes a toll on on anyone's body and short term like sure i can do i can maintain that for two months and do go all out basically and some some days i didn't sleep for two days or three days to make sure that it wasn't for fuel though but like earlier on when i tried to grind out grind it out and yeah back then i was allowed to do it by the ecosystem and so on Uh, right now i'm not allowed to do it because I'm just going to hurt myself in the long run otherwise. So as as from a coaching perspective, then, how did you approach that adaption phase where you were kind of moving from coaching teams that were competing irregularly to to coaching a team that was competing twice a week? How how was that approach for you? Um, My approach was similar. And when when we competed less, I had less um, structure for myself, like in my thoughts and so on. And when we started competing two times a week i i realized before that that we we need like a a sort of workflow or process you know to break down our own like problems or ideas like in game and it's less uh less possible to do it with um, intuition as it is as it was back then because then you had some time to rest up and let it like sink in but right now you need to have sort of a um, process that you can trust in and structure things. And that provided a lot of help, uh, making sure that I don't work too much or too little on something and that there's like limits. Sure. So do you think that moving into season two and season three, when coaches are kind of more used to the structure or more used to the format, do you think we'll see improvements in that regard? Because everyone will be more... Because I guess it kind of was a shock to the system when it started out in stage one this year. But do you think when coaches are more apt to that kind of mindset, do you think we'll see an improvement? Definitely. I, f- I think a lot of coaches are actually interested in in doing more structured, uh, like thinking and and uh, process, you know handling systems in the team more like uh, standard management outside of esports, whereas maybe six months ago or seven months ago it wasn't like that you know where it feels better to be you know going by trial and error almost and uh, a lot of people in OWL at least you know realize that it it's not healthy to uh, take day, that every day as it comes instead it's you have to be able to predict some stuff and in season two for sure a lot of uh, teams are going to have that type of uh, structure. So to start wrapping things up here, before we get into some quick fire questions, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot with a sort of difficult question, but do you feel as though you can confidently say that the worst is in fact behind the Dallas Fuel now? So personally, I would say that I don't know if uh, the worst is behind us because I don't know what the end of my career you know, looks like. I don't know what lessons I learned. Uh, what lessons I haven't learned. I just know that there's a lot I still need to learn. And from from I, w- I was trained in management, like when I studied, I know that situations can derail extremely if you handle them poorly. And I was taught several lessons in project groups where I couldn't leave the group and we had to solve the problems we had internally. That if you try and push away problems, it becomes a tug of war. And when everyone is then burned out because of the stress or whatever, you realize that everyone is almost desperate about trying to get everything working. They they pull to their own like side. And it's like a natural response to make sure that everyone is in one single file under the same umbrella, but everyone tries it. And then it becomes a lot of dissonance. So sometimes you have to 
give a, you know, uh, how to say it, uh, when these bad situations come, it might get worse, it might get better, and good situations might turn worse just because of uh, natural things, uh, accidents, and so on. And but for 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 the general answer, I'd say yeah, uh, but I don't know what the future holds. Sure, I think that's a fair approach. So to get into finally kind of come to a conclusion with this, just a few quick fire questions, just short answers. You don't have to get too involved with these if that's okay. So we'll just jump right into things. What is your favorite map? My favorite map, it must be King's Row. Same, it's a good map. What is your favorite hero? My favorite hero is Tracer and then Widowmaker. Actually, right now it's Widowmaker, yeah. Sure. Have you had a favorite meta in Overwatch history? A favorite meta, I think. I think it was the Farah Mercy meta, and it was good and bad. The good, the funny thing about it was that it was in the start, it was thirty minute fights on point on Oasis and so on, and it was just interesting to work with it. Sure. Will we see you involved in the World Cup, perhaps coming up? Uh, I hope so. I'm I'm gonna try. I tried the uh, last year, and I'm gonna try this year as well, and. I want to be the Swedish, uh, how do you say, the Swedish benchmark for uh, the national team. Sure. Okay, I know you were into Heroes of the Storm for a time, and I know you hit Legend in Hearthstone, but what would you say outside of Overwatch are some of your favorite video games? Uh, Street Fighter, StarCraft Brood War, and 1.6. I played a lot of uh, Heroes of the Storm, though, but I, I, I just didn't have people to play with, so I quit it. But I I love that game as well. All right, and now the final question. It doesn't have to necessarily be a win specifically, but what would you say, if you can pinpoint one specific example, what would you say is perhaps the series that you're most proud of being with the Dallas Fuel this year? The proudest one? Uh, I'm not sure if I have a special, like, proudest series because I take every series to to the same level basically and not not in terms of uh, preparation because some some matches require more and less and all that stuff but the most uh proud um, i don't know I, I can't i can't answer it but uh well, that's a good most, mindset to have though yeah I, I can say i was proud of seeing the guys happy and uh coming back to old roots and uh, you're just doing well in the last week sure all right well thank you so much again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here i really do appreciate that and obviously best of luck to you and the dallas fuel moving ahead in stage four it was a pleasure and uh, i'm i'm happy to uh, to be here and thank you. Uh, thank you as well thanks man appreciate it